Well, hello everybody. Good morning. Uh, grab your Bibles, grab your coffee, your tea, and uh, let's get going. We are, um, well, first of all, welcome to Small Family Adventures. I'm Stephen. And um, every Sunday morning, we put out a devotion, and that's what this is for. We are going through a series right now called Light Maneuvers, and I took this from an old uh, Christian uh, music album that I used to listen to called Light Maneuvers by a band called Servant, and this was uh, back in the 80s. And so we're taking the uh, the song titles or the songs of each off that album, there's like 10 or 11, and uh, this is our fourth one, and today we're looking at Surrender, uh, the name of the song is Surrender, and um, and uh, let me read you the lyrics for this, and I will get into scripture, and uh, so, um, Surrender, uh, his first verse, please hear me, draw near me, where's the joy I carried so long ago, I'm lonely, I only, sorry, let me start over here, please hear me, draw near me, Where's the joy I carried so long ago? I'm lonely. I only wear your name to cover my empty soul. It's not worth the agony. No one's born to live alone. Transform this tragedy. Let white flags fly. For I surrender all. All, all to Jesus. I must surrender all. All, all to Jesus. I must surrender all. Please hear me. Draw near me, touch my heart, and shatter my selfish pride. Forgive me, live in me. Honesties are nothing that I should hide. The one who cried for all the world so very long ago, let the banners be unfurled, let white flags fly, for I surrender all. All, all to Jesus, I must surrender all. All, all to Jesus, I must surrender all. It's not worth the agony. No one's born to live alone. Transform this tragedy. Let white flags fly, for I surrender all. All, all to Jesus, I must surrender all. All to Jesus, I must surrender all. There we go. Uh, bet we can guess what the, the, the name of this song is. Well, of course I told you that, but surrender, surrender all. Uh, initial thought when I when I read this um, is that um, I think of what the disciples did when Jesus called on them when Jesus was looking for for whom would be his disciples they dropped everything he went to to um, to the Sea of Galilee I believe it was and there was Peter Simon Peter. And he said, come, I'll make you fishers of men. Him, and I and, uh, can't remember who was with him. I don't know if it was James or whom. But uh, um, he, said, he said, come, follow me. And they dropped what they were doing. And they followed him. They left, they left it all behind, and they followed him. Um, then he, uh, uh, he called another disciple, Matthew, in, in the same thing. Matthew is a tax collector. And... Um, he just dropped everything, and um, and he followed Jesus. They all did, um, and so where are we at in our life when it says here, surrender all? Are we surrendering all? Are we giving him all? Everything that we have is his. He we have it on loan, including the relationships we have, uh, and what do we do with them? What do we do? Is this stuff? Is this stuff owning us? Or are we owning it, and 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 are we so attached that if somebody's in need, that we won't we won't give it? Um, is a life worth more than a thing? Um, some people, I believe, think so in this world. But for us, we must surrender all. We must give all. Um, uh, before we get into the Bible. Some verses. Um, we talked about getting rid of our pride, our selfish pride, right, and uh, and being humble. And I just wanted to tell you something. When I heard, I heard from a person who who said, um, "Cause I'm like, 
yeah, I'm going to pray to be humble. I'm, I'm asking God to, to help me to be humble. And he said, don't pray to be humbled. Be humble. It says, he says, wherever it says something like, like humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, you have that ability to do that task, whatever it is. Um, so if he says, be humble, then you be humble. We have the power through Jesus to be humble or whatever that task is. Um, and if you don't know, you ask. Ask for wisdom. Ask to see. Ask to understand how to accomplish this task. And then I heard a different person, a preacher, I believe, say, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, we have available to us to obey, to do whatever it is, to be holy, to be humble, to go forth and and um, to talk about Jesus, to love on people, to love our enemies. The Holy Spirit is our helper. When Jesus said, I have to go, you know, go to be with his father and prepare a place for us. And he said, I have to go. If I don't go, the helper won't come. The helper is the Holy Spirit. And so that is who helps us. So now I, I wanted to look at some verses on what what we are directed as far as humility, as far as being humble. And the first one, uh, we're going to go back to 1 Peter chapter 5. Um, if you have your Bibles, open them up. Go to BibleGateway.com um, if you want. Um, I'm reading through, if you want to follow along exactly, I'm reading through the NIV on all these verses. I've got a stack of verses here. Um, to go through. Not a large stack, but they're very important. Take what you need. Take what God is using to speak to you and leave the rest. Come back for more later or, or leave it and just let God work in you. But uh, I hope you have, we're able to get to First Peter now. First Peter 5, 6 to 7. If I'm going too fast, maybe after each verse you want to pause the video so that you can, you can uh, read it and, and be prepared. Um, all right, here we go. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him. Uh, other translations say, cast all your cares um, on him, and he will lift you up. Oh, no, that's a different verse. Uh, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You have a loving father. Um, he cares for us. Uh, Colossians 3.12. Colossians 3.12, if you need, pause the video again so you can get to the verse. Um, sometimes it helps to hear the reading in one translation, and then um, you read it in another and see if there's a different word used in the other translation that might help you understand a little bit more. Um, Colossians 3, 12. Here we go. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and here's the word, humility, gentleness, and patience. We are to be humble. Just to jump, I didn't wasn't going to put it in here, but jump over to 14. It says, over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So to have good love, to love people properly, we need humility. Ephesians 4.2. Ephesians 4.2. Again, if you need to pause, hit the pause button. Ephesians 4.2 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. Uh, Proverbs, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 11, 2. This is in the Old Testament. Pause it if you need to. Proverbs 11, 2. Let's see here. Psalms, Proverbs, 11, and verse 2, 
All right, we have when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. With humility comes wisdom. You need wisdom. You need to be humble. Um, Proverbs 22, 4. Go over a few chapters to Proverbs 22. It's a good time to pause if you need to. Come back when you got your Bible ready. Proverbs 22, excuse me, 4. Humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. Go back down a couple chapters to Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, 12. Before his downfall, a man's heart is proud. But humility comes before honor. And then we're going to go back, jump back a book to Psalm 149. Psalm 149. This is close to the end, if not very, oh, the second chapter to the end. Verse 4, for the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. And then the last section, Romans 12, 3. Romans 12, 3. Twelve three. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. That's humility. We are to be humble. We are to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought. When I was a kid, um, I used to help out in the little baby room, and they sang a song called Joy, and they spelled out the word joy. Jesus, others, and you. That was a, a proper a way we thought of people. We put G Jesus first, we put others, and then we put us. Um, humility, to put ourselves below other people. Um, very important. Um, to move on, uh, main passage, go to Matthew 14, and we're going to look at Peter, and we're not going to stay here too long because of time. We're already into 13 minutes here, but uh, Peter, well, the disciples were out on the boat, and um, they went across, and Jesus told the disciples, go across, and he stayed there was a crowd there, and then he went up the mountainside to pray. And when evening came, the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, and uh, the waves of the the sea began to buffet and become, um, you know, windy, big waves. And uh, during the fourth watch, uh, it says, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. This is in verse 26 now. Um, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to onto the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. So Peter took his eyes off Jesus. Remember we talked about that last week, Hebrews 12, 1, where it said, fix your eyes on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that we need to fix our eyes, not on what's going on in this world, not what's going on in this life, but humble ourselves, call on him. Um, 
I almost wonder if there's a pride in this uh, with with uh, Peter getting out of the boat and going in the water, uh, which I never thought of that till now. That that maybe there was some pride in there. Yeah, I'll go out there. I don't know. I have to look at this a little bit more. It doesn't really say how his intentions were, except that Jesus said in the end he doubted Christ, and and because of that he looked on himself. He didn't fix his eyes on Jesus, and he began to go into the water. Well, brothers and sisters, fix your eyes on Jesus. He is the author of our faith. He does care for us. We are to humble ourselves. It is a tough thing. I get it. This uh, 2019 was a hard year for me to learn to humble myself. And, um, and I'm doing it every day. It's a daily thing, sometimes hourly, in our minds, to not put other people um, ahead of us. I mean, to not put ourselves ahead of other people, but to put other people ahead of us. Um, to be humble, to not be prideful. I hope you have a great day, a new year. Oh, yeah, happy new year. It's a new year, 2020. And, um, and God go with you. Next week, we're going to look at another song and, uh, and look at the message there and dive into scripture. But for this week, I will pray for you. And will you pray for me that God would work in us and through us his joy, his peace, his love, and his mercy um, grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus and all that he has done for us, okay? I love you in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We'll see you soon, all right? Bye.